بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة Sing. 
शृंगार शाहिस्ते नजार तवलार सो मोख शृंगार शाहिस्ते नजार तवलार सो هر دو نفر ثبت نام بکنن 
احتمال بردن شرطن بیشتر دو برابر میشه این دو نفر ثبت نام کردن و هر کدوم که ببرن همسرشون و اولاد زیر 21 سالشون هم میتونن که باشون بیان کسایی که خودشون بالای 21 سال هستن که خودشون خوبه ثبت نام کنن هم هر کی بالای 21 سال هست خودش خوبه برای لاتری ثبت نام کنه اگر همسر داره همسرش هم خوبه حتما ثبت نام بکنه هر دو تاشون ثبت نام کنن که ان شاءالله یکشون برد اون یکی هم از طریق همسرش میاد بعد همین که در نظر داشته باشید که دستور عملشو حالا براتون وبسایتشو میذارم تو برنامه که میرید تو اون وبسایت و دستور عمل عکسشو مهمه که همون جوری که گفتن انجام بدید و که درست انجام بشه که ثبت نامتون رو درست قبول کنن و یک دلیلی که الان چند ساله که این کار از طریق اینترنت انجام میشه برای اینه که تقلبی تو کار نباشه و کسی دوبار ثبت نام نکنه اگر کسی دوبار ثبت نام بکنید مخصوصا که الان که از طریق اینترنت هست به احتمال خیلی زیاد متوجه خواهند شد و اگر متوجه بشن وقت به کلی نمیتونید در این لاتری شرکت کنید یعنی اگر دو بار ثبت نام کنید هر دو بارشو وقت رد میکنن و اصلا تو لاتری شرکت نخواهید کرد برای همین خیلی مهمه که هر شخص فقط یک بار ثبت نام بکنه البته همسرش هم میتونه همون یک بار تقاضا کنه هر کدوم فقط یک بار ثبت نام بکنن از طریق اینترنت تا ان در بهار سال آینده معمولا از ماه اپریل می اون موقع ها نامش میاد برای قبولی و این بستگی داره به اینکه کجا به دنیا آمدی کسایی که افغانستان به دنیا آمدن ایران به دنیا آمدن میتونن ثبت نام کنن حتی اگر مقیم کشور دیگه هم هستن یا تابع کشور دیگه هم هستن مثلا کسایی که افغانستان به دنیا آمدن در اروپا یا کانادا زندگی میکنن یا مقیم اونجا هستن باز هم میتونن ثبت نام بکنن ولی اگر کسی در مثلا یک تعداد کشورهایی هستن که خیلی مهاجر میفرستن به آمریکا و اون کشورها کسایی که در اون کشورها به دنیا آمدن نمیتونن ثبت نام کنن مثلا نمونش کانادا چون کانادا تعداد زیادی مهاجر در هر سال در مخصوصا در پنج سال اخیر به آمریکا فرستاده کسی که در کانادا به دنیا آمده باشه و تابع کانادا باشه نمیتونه تقاضا برای لاتری بکنه واجد شرایط نیست ولی کسایی که در افغانستان به دنیا آمدن حتی اگر در کانادا هم زندگی بکنن و تابع کانادا هم باشن یا اروپا هر جای دیگه باز هم میتونن که ثبت نام بکنن و برنده بشن اقامتشون از این طریق بگیرن کسی که برنده بشه این یکی از راحت ترین راه هاست برای اقامت گرفتن در آمریکا فقط شرطش این هست که یا دیپلم دبیرستان داشته باشید یا وقتی که برنده شدید یا دیپلم دبیرستان داشته باشید یا اینکه یه کاری کرده باشید شغلتون شغلی باشه که حداقل دو سال سابقه کار بخواد البته نگران اینش نباشید شما همه من پیشنهاد میکنم ثبت نامو بکنید در حال حاضر تا آخر نوامبر در هر چه زودتر وقتی که برنده شدید اون وقت اگر سوالی در مشکلی در مورد شرایطش داشتید اون وقت با وکیل تماس بگیرید چون ثبت نامش رایگان هست خرجی نداره براتون غیر از اینکه فقط عکس ها رو از طریق اینترنت انجام بدید تنها کاری که داره برای عکس هاست بعد که برنده شدید اون وقت میتونید ببینید که شرایط دیگش چیه و آیا که مشکلی بود تماس بگیرید وبسایتش هم عرض میکنم حالا بازم زیر برنامه میذارن براتون ولی وبسایتش هست www.dvlottery که هست l o t t e r y .state .gov این وبسایتی هست که میرید و همه اطلاعات اونجا هست به, به این پرو برنامه به اسم دیوی لاتری یا دایورسیتی دیوی برای دایورسیتی ویزا هست اسمش دایورسیتی ویزا هست برای همین هست دوباره www.dvlottery.state.gov در روی وبسایت وزارت امور خارجه آمریکا هست یعنی ستیت دیپارتمنت این درست لینکی هست که برای دیوی لاتری میرید همه اطلاعات اونجا هست و پیشنهاد می کنم حتما ثبت نام بکنید من ایرانی هایی می بینم که هر سال ثبت نام می کنن و می, می برن 
و از این طریق اقامت می گیرن ولی متاسفانه هنوز از دوستان از افغانی ندیدم امیدوارم که بیشتر ثبت نام بکنن تا بیشتر هم احتمالش باشه که ببرن برای همین هر سال میام تذکر میدم که ثبت نام بکنید که انشالله در سال آینده از دوستان عزیز افغانی هم ببینم که بردن لاتری ولی تا ثبت نام نکنید نمیدونید که میبرید یا نه حتما ثبت نامو بکنید این مهمترین پیغام امشب همه که در اولین فرصت حتما تا قبل از آخر نوامبر امسال ثبت نامو بکنید و آرزو میکنم که ببرید و در زم اگر هر مشکلی در چه در مورد لاتری کارت سبزی یا در هر امور دیگه مهاجرت و تابعیت آمریکا داشتید حتما با من شاپور مطلوب در دفترم در سان فرانسیسکو تماس بگیرید و خوشحال میشم که بتونم در امور مهاجرت و تابعیت بهتون کمک کنم و انشالله در ماه آینده ماه نوام دوباره خدمتون میرسم تا یک یادآوری دیگه باز هم در مورد لاتری کارت سبز بهتون بکنم پس تا برنامه آینده خداحافظی بهتون میکنم شبتون بخیر
what is basically known as a special collection, um, completely set up uh, to catalog information that's going to help you build stronger nonprofits, which will make you more attractive and more likely to find partnerships with foundations. And so we have everything from board development books to legal issues for nonprofits, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in the library, we also have um, what is basically 22 workstations that give you free access to what is our subscription database. And that subscription database is called the Foundation Directory Online. And it's a highly searchable tool where you can actually query, um, basically query the database and ask it to suggest to you which foundations might be interested in A red one for time zap. <laughs> so uh, here we go. Um, I'm new to this organization and my, this is my very first summit. Uh, I just joined uh, Afghanistan Education for a Better Tomorrow uh, recently and I'm on board of directors now. Yeah, we move very quickly. Uh, what we've been doing, we are registered in uh, uh, Alaska as a nonprofit, uh, in Afghanistan as an NGO, and uh, it was actually started as a grassroots effort uh, out of Southern California by uh, Afghan Americans, uh, people that had gone back home, seen what the situation was like, and felt compelled to do something about it. Uh, why are we focusing on education? Well, I'll tell you. I'm sure you've got a pretty good idea already. I don't mind if you're going to be telling us more about it. But <laughs> um, first of all, did you know that in rural Afghanistan, uh, on according to the UN uh, press, based on a conference that they had the eve of International Literacy Day, September 7th, of this year, Afghanistan currently has one of the highest illiteracy rates in the world. 34% of the population can read and write, and most of these people are in the urban areas. The rural areas are occupied by three quarters of the population, and the illiteracy rates there are 90% women and 63% of the men are totally illiterate. Schools have been affected very heavily uh, by the conflict. 75, around 75% of the schools were damaged over three decades of conflict. By the end of 2008, 600 schools in southern Afghanistan were closed. 48% of schools have adequate water sanita and sanitation facilities. And since 2002, 1,753 schools have been rehabilitated or constructed. Five, about 5,574, which seems like a pretty accurate number to me, uh, still need to be built within the next three years. And uh, the groups that were working uh, on these goals include the Literacy Department of the Ministry of Education, UNICEF's Women's Literacy and Empowerment, UNESCO Enhancement of Literacy, UN Habitat Learning for Community Empowerment. So that is one of the reasons, that is the reason that we're focusing on education. Uh, we've got a lot of work to, uh, that has to be done. And uh, our panelists are going to be uh, discussing what they have done, what their experience has been in trying to improve education in Afghanistan, what's worked for them, what hasn't. And after all of the presentations, we will have a chance for a Q&A. So please save all of your questions for them if you don't mind. Just make sure that everybody has a chance to talk. Uh, Dalmai Roshan is going to be our first speaker. He was born in Afghanistan and received his primary education in the country. He then received a master's in political science and public administration from the American University of Beirut. And upon returning home, he worked for the Department of Tourism 
and was instrumental in developing travel and tourism legislation, program implementation, and participation in international gatherings on tourism-related issues. Shortly before the Soviet invasion in December of 79, he came to the United States and received an MBA in marketing and management from the University of Toledo. And he's been involved in teaching ever since and is currently chair of a Pashto language program at the Defense Language Institute's Foreign Language Institute in Monterey. Uh, so he will be our uh, first presenter, followed by Kim O'Connor. Uh, Kim is the current president of Afghans for Tomorrow, a nonprofit, all volunteer organization that started more than 10 years ago. A for T focuses on education, agriculture, and health projects. Uh, and she is going to be talking to you about, I believe, the briquette program that they do. Different than that. Yeah. Um, Camilla Berry. Uh, I spent the summer working within the ministry with the Ministry of Education, helping to develop lessons for teacher training, uh, and led workshops for several hundred faculty members. She wrote a book on hands-on science lessons, which we translated, and uh, emphasizing <coughs> hands-on learning instead of rote. She talked to teachers about the programs that they, the problems that they have implementing some of these programs, like not enough time, not enough money. Uh, she also worked within the ministry with those teachers, and one of her most interesting experiences, or probably I should say the most rewarding, is when she set up a science experimental table, experiment table, in the front hall of the ministry and was just very gratified to see all the teachers gathered around and all the time that they could uh, playing with them and learning from it. Um, Carol, the Honorable Carol Ruth Silver is going to be um, our next presenter and she is an attorney, a grandmother, and a former elected official. She served over 10 years on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. And she has been very entrepreneurial. She founded a very successful Chinese American um, Institute 25 years ago. Uh, she has been an untiring advocate for, uh, since 9-11 on education in Afghanistan. Her current passion is not is refusing to forget that half of that Afghans that have nothing can read or write, and uh, to support and bypass support uh, Afghans and bypass the obstacles they run into in trying to uh, improve their lives. Uh, she will be talking to you about the uh, little EXO that she was demonstrating downstairs that I find just absolutely incredible. Um, I think American kids would benefit from one of those too. And finally, Dr. Sandra Cook, uh, who is co-chair of the Dupree Foundation, which is the Lewis and Nancy Hatch Dupree Foundation for Afghanistan. So the slogan is, Rebuilding Afghanistan One Book at a Time. And uh, the Afghan Center at Bull University houses their library and research center. They also have a portable library that goes out into the countryside. And uh, they encourage reading and inform by covering practical topics as farming, homemaking techniques, and are published in both Dari and Pashto. So, with that, I would like to have Zamai. Um, present. We've got four minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be short at the Give you the one minute warning. So please uh, go ahead for, and start. For the sake of time, good afternoon. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to sort of really go to the heart of it. I had prepared a little bit of information in terms of background, <coughs> education in Afghanistan. 
Uh, and then I was going to talk a little bit statistical uh, undertone of what is happening in the country. And thank you very much, you did that. So uh, it is indeed dismal. It indeed is a, it, it is a situation that requires an immediate attention. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump into what I... Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is the workshop for an panel discussion for fundraising and fundraising. Uh, today, uh, we are very honored to have some very experienced individuals share their ideas. These are ideas that no one else will tell you, so you guys should really all be um, very thankful uh, that they are coming here to share their ideas and let us know information, insider information that we're not able to find out from everywhere else about grant seeking. These are all, all the individuals on the panel are experienced in applying for and getting grants and uh, implementing projects in Afghanistan. So there's a lot of great information here that you guys are going to hear. So um, I'm going to pass it over to our moderator, uh, Mrs. Uh, Ronald Popov, to uh, Executive Director of the Afghan Coalition to introduce all of the panelists and we'll get the uh, event started. Yeah, good afternoon. Thank you very much for participating in this workshop. Uh, today we are here, I think uh, not me actually, I have very experienced people, um, Mrs. Heidi Kuhn, he is the founder and the director for the Roots of Peace program. Uh, she has several programs inside Afghanistan, she is very successful. Uh, and also Mr. Hassan Karim, he is the president for Afghan Business Network. Fruits and nuts and vegetables and sharing that is, makes me proud to 
be an American. As we gear up for this holiday season, maybe we be reminded to give back across the world to Afghanistan. First of all, I have a mother. I want to say my largest credentials um, are not CEO and founder of Roots of Peace. Began 12 years ago with a toast in the living room of our home that the world may go from minds to minds. But I think my, my greatest credential is that I am a wife and mother of four children. And my husband works alongside with me and has been to Afghanistan on 21 occasions. We both graduated from UC Berkeley together in political economics and industrial societies, never ever believing that we would be working across the world. Our younger son, Christian, who I gave birth to after surviving cancer, came to me one day with a globe. He taught me a geography and a lesson that I had never learned before. Where he said, Mommy, you always told me if I dig a hole deep enough from Ray County, I would end up in China. He spun the globe for me that day. Did you end up in China? <laughs> you go to the core of peace and you end up in Afghanistan. So that's why I am to picking my Sunday. With great thought and great purpose and great respect for my colleagues on this panel because none of us are going to accomplish this alone. We may fool ourselves. We have footprints, limited footprints on this earth. But the legacy that we have to give back to Afghanistan right now at the beginning of this month is the crossroads of human history. So I, um, I, I certainly will pass these around as I'm going to dim the lights. I'm going to tell you how I fundraise and friend raise because it comes from the heart as well as the head. And I think when you, when you sever one from the other, you're not meeting as one. And when you go to Afghanistan or Croatia, where we planted rice in Cambodia, grapes in Afghanistan, orchards in Croatia, wheat in Iraq, Later this week, I'll be going to Los Angeles where children are collected pennies to help build a school in Iraq. It's about the whole world. We breathe the same air, we watch the same autumn leaves bloom, and fall as one day our lives will fall. But we hope they fall gracefully in Afghanistan, and we hope to cultivate truly a harvest of hope. So as I pass these anti-personnel landlines again, remembering each of my children waiting on the earth. Many of you, I'm sure humans around the world, are in that range, but it takes eight pounds to detonate the landlines. <laughs> Afghanistan venture capital, there's somebody asking you, is, is it true? Venture capital for Afghanistan, yes, there are. There are so many different sources and resources which you can tap on, and you go in, like, as a matter of fact, I just came from Washington, D.C. Uh, last week, and I found out exactly there are so many sources and resources for everybody uh, to tap on and get uh, a, uh, either grant, uh, invest, excuse me, investments, or uh, the way you can do fundraising among your own community, how you do it. And those are the things you need to learn, you need to understand, is all turn into business. Uh, well, that's what I need to say. If you really need to, to collaborate with Apple Business Network a little bit more and teach you or train you or coach you the way we are looking at it as, as far as business, because we are them, as a matter of fact, our organization reach out to the Fortune 1000 companies in the US in order to start a mentoring program between Afghanistan and US. And also we have tons and tons of investors, that includes venture, angel, private investors or within the US that are willing to help uh, Afghanistan, not limited to the grants. USAID has tons and tons of grants, and but we need to know exactly how we can answer those all of fees. Like, uh, person right before us here, she mentioned that. Majority of us in this room may or may not know how to write proposals, how to look at the RFP in the right way. So what is that RFP is all about? Uh, you know, request for proposals or request for information, you know, RFP or FI too, because sometimes they wanted to know about your 
organization. So what is that you do? Those are all informational stuff you need to look at. Once you put that RFI in place, then that turn into RFP, and then you have to go and write a proposal. How do you write a proposal? What is a proposal? There are so many different ways of writing proposals. One is a short proposals based on your presentation. And instead of looking at RFPs, you write a proposal in regards to your project. Whatever the project you have, you're going to go and have that request to the county, so to the local community, so you can put that proposal in place. What is that? You have to refer back to the RFP, which you have to go line by line of items in order to answer those and realize that exactly what is that you're asking for. The majority of those RFPs or the proposals are being rejected because we have seen them so many times. They did not go and answer it correctly or, or propose it in a right direction. So it means that that's critical uh, for any of all those proposals you write. You must pay attention, you must go through each line item by line item and answer it. Otherwise, guess what? If there are four of them in there, if yours is missing one piece out of that proposal, guess what? It's going to be thrown away. So those are, those are the things we would like to tell. And also, in the meantime, um, if you wanted to know, know, know more about this, get on to the Afghan Business Network um, website. Um, we'd love to help you. We have a complete portal situation is in there. We have training uh, in there. And also, we have coaching, mentoring to do all of these. Uh, please let me know any way possible. And your, your information is in the book. It also. is, uh, yes, well, thank you. It's my information is in the book. The one thing that's really important um, point that I want to make is for some reason, it's very important networking. Who do you know? very important, advocacy and uh, networking. What, uh, when I see, look at uh, uh, Heidi, when she started her project, I was there in her house, that she started uh, her uh, Roots of Peace program. The one thing is she's very active. She went all around, all around the United States. She traveled, especially to Washington, D.C. She met with senators, she met with legislators, she met with everybody who is in charge or working for our country in order to make her case. I think that's one very important um, you know, point is that if you want to get funding, I think you need to know the key persons. You need to find out who are they and what they need. Look at the proposal, as Mr. Tarin said. What project they want you to work in Afghanistan. It's not like what you want to do. That's one thing is bad about some foundations because they have their own goals. They want you to do the project they want you to do. And, and then it's up to you how you negotiate with them, how you talk to them about your project, to link that project with the project that they want you to do in Afghanistan. And also, when I look at a lot of these funding agencies, the USAID, and, and one of the very simple ones is the Bayard Foundation. And I look at the category, the things that they want you to you know, do in order to uh, provide this uh, grant. I made some copy, some of these applications, so you can have them. If they were, you know, serve the Afghan people, have no political or religious objective, no incentive discrimination. सच दिकरानी में हमारा बड़ी दिमागा हमारा मालूमगा चिखुल स्वयं बदे खुरी मामा और अक्कर पुके नष्ट न दतीरो से प्रतखली او دل تمام توخل لهم روس فرنگی ماما سرور کی دزلا سرور کی دزلا 
alam ganjo alam ganjo alam ganj oh bhyo pure malam ganj alam ganjo alam ganjo alam ganj oh bhyo pure malam ganj parangi zolmas maulam kunesh ranj oh bhyo pure malam ganj Parangi zolmas, aulam kunesh ganj, oh bhya pure malam 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 ganj. Alam ganj dar gref, dudesh baromat, oh bhya pure malam ganj. Sadae tule, enjin nayomat, oh bhya pure malam ganj. Sadae tule, enjin nayomat, oh bhya pure malam ganj. Parangi zolmas, maulam kunesh ganj. Oh, bhya pure malam ganj. Oh, bhya pure malam ganj. Vador bhya pure malam ganj. Oh, bhya pure malam ganj. Vador bhya pure malam. Alam ganj baghe sar, kariz khudaya, oh bhya pure malam ganj. Alam ganj baghe sar, kariz khudaya, oh bhya pure malam ganj. Damashin khana shao, kariz khudaya. Damashin khana shao, kariz khudaya, oh bhya pure malam ganj. Parangi zolmas, maulam kunesh ganj, oh bhya pure malam ganj. Parangi zolmas, maulam kunesh ganj, oh bhya pure malam ganj.
Some. 